One of the greatest challenges in automobile racing is the Triple Crown. Three 500-mile races, one near the surf of the Pacific Ocean, the second in the heart of the Corn Belt of America, Indianapolis, Indiana, and the third in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania. Johnny Rutherford in car number three has won his second straight 500-mile race, first in Indianapolis and now here at Pocono. Anthony Joseph Foyt Jr. is the Triple Crown Champion for 1975, with a first at Ontario, third at Indianapolis, first at Pocono. What a record. And so in 1978, Al Unzer joined four other men in winning three Indianapolis 500s. And he went on that year to win the California and Pocono 500s to become the first and only driver to win racing's Triple Crown in a single season. Here's the man that uh, a lot of attention is being focused on as he goes for a Triple Crown. I guess I think I'd rather uh, win this race than the other five or six uh, put together that we have. Now, he is part of that triple crown. If he can win this race, then go on to Pocono and win that 500-miler, then he might win $1 million. A race that will become the second jewel in U.S. auto racing's first triple crown. This is the second jewel in racing's 500 triple crown. It's the third jewel of the triple crown. If you're going to bring history back, the one thing that the fans wanted to see was the Triple Crown. If you win the Triple Crown, if you win all three races, you win a million dollars. And if you win two out of three, you win 250000 Standing with one of the favorites of today's race, Tony Kanaan, and he is the only driver that has a shot at the Fuzzy's Triple Crown. Thanks to Fuzzy's Vodka, there was a million dollars on the line for the one driver who could win the Indianapolis 500, the Pocono 400, and this, the MAP TV 500. The Fuzzy's Triple Crown, $250,000 available if someone wins two of the three Triple Crown races. Forms the middle of the Triple Crown of 500 milers, Indianapolis, Pocono, and California. Al Unser, the Chuck and Flag, the winner of the 1970 Indianapolis 500 mile race. And it sure goes wild. The spine-tingling spectacle of auto racing has become the sport of the 70s. A brilliant, big-budget kind of professional sport that has come very far and very fast from an infancy at state fair dirt tracks in small Midwestern towns to the status of the world's top spectator sport. This is the moment of truth for the 33 drivers as the 500 miles of California starts rolling into the history of 20th century sports. For McElreath at 42, this victory brought undying fame as the winner of the first ever race at this great new speedway, plus $146,850 in prize money for a first place win. He goes into the history books along with Ray Haroon, who won the first big Indianapolis 500 back in 1911. Al Unser, winner of the 1971 Indianapolis 500 mile race. It's coming. The Schaefer 500 at Pocono. The world's greatest drivers are coming to Pocono Raceway, Mount Pocono, Pennsylvania. Plan now. Be there. The $400,000 Schaefer 500 at Pocono. Race morning. 33 of the world's most experienced and respected race drivers awaiting the start of the first 500-mile test on a new two-and-a-half-mile track. A race that will become the second jewel in U.S. auto racing's first triple crown, along with Indy in May and Ontario in September. Gentlemen, start your engine! Side of the start line, he goes up under Joe Leonard, moves down the inside, they're wheel to wheel. 
to the California 500 rather intriguing. You simply drive faster than 32 other guys and collect $200,000 or so. A quarter of a million big ones riding on first place, you haven't got time to be polite, just faster than everybody else. Why am I in the California 500? Well, I'll give you 200,000 reasons, and they're all green. If I win the California 500, I'll win the kind of money people think I already have. The California 500, September 5th, Ontario. The crowd on its feet, waving their hats, waving their arms as the red, white, and blue helmet of Johnny Rutherford in the bright orange car goes streaking by over into turn number four. And here's the checkered flag for Johnny Rutherford, winner of the 1974 Indianapolis 500-mile race. Not only the eyes of Texas are upon this great guy, but the eyes of the world right now. He has driven a fantastic race. Triumphal at the Pocono International Raceway today for the third jewel in auto racing's triple crown of 500-mile races. Johnny Rutherford in car number three has won his second straight 500-mile race, first Indianapolis and now here at Pocono. Also, the Triple Crown this year goes to Bobby Unser. He won it Ontario, he was second in Indianapolis, he was fifth here today. In 1974, Johnny Rutherford took two out of three. In 1975, A.J. Foyt has his mind set on winning them all. The Gilmore Special rolls into the big old victory lane. And A.J. Foyt is on his way to what could be a history-making season of racing. The rain is so heavy that the cars slow to a snail's pace and visibility is cut to a few hundred yards. The winner of the rain shortened 500 is Bobby Unzer. Anthony Joseph Foyt Jr. is the Triple Crown Champion for 1975 with a first at Ontario, third at Indianapolis, first at Pocono. What a record. Direct from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the 1978 500-mile race. Doing a fantastic job is Al Unser. The checkered flag is waved. His hand is in the air. Al Unser, the winner of the 1978 500-mile race. And so in 1978, Al Unzer joined four other men in winning three Indianapolis 500s. And he went on that year to win the California and Pocono 500s to become the first and only driver to win racing's Triple Crown in a single season. because it's the inaugural event and perhaps more exciting for the drivers and the crews is the purse is over five hundred thousand dollars the starter gives the green flag and the first michigan 500 for indy cars is underway and it tom is... Sneva moves out in the front johnson was in for a regular refuel and then suddenly the car burst into flame and now they have a fire that is burning all around the fuel tank in herm johnson's pit in turn two we have a report of a problem Yellow flag. AJ Foyt into, into the, the wall. wall. AJ Foyt. Foyt in turn two went into the wall, then it rolled down the wall. John Cock maintains the lead. The boys of the 500 Paul Page. Who's going to win it? Gordon John Cock off the fourth turn. Mears is right behind him. John Cock. Mears makes it try. John Cock wins it. I lost the one tenth of a second. Gordon John Cock has won his second 500. Welcome to our 
our live coverage of the Michigan 500. This is the second jewel in racing's 500 Triple Crown. He won 500 miles in Indianapolis. He knows he's got it won. His hand in the air and victory. Gordon Johncock sees the double checkered flags and Gordon Johncock has won the Michigan 500. And he has won the first two legs of the Triple Crown. Here's the man that uh, a lot of attention is being focused on as he goes for a triple crown. He won at Indianapolis. He won at Michigan. He goes for the 500 miles at Pocono. Gordon Johncock, what would it mean to accomplish the triple this day? Well, it would mean a great deal, Gary. Uh, I guess I think I'd rather uh, win this race than the other five or six uh, put together that we have. Well, as Gary suggests, we have the makings of a classic battle here. There are your first three cars running on the main straightaway together. It's Mears, John Cox. And John Cox has got a problem as Kogan screams past. John Cox slows. The battle ends for Gordon John Cox. The triple crown has gone away with just a few laps to the finish. Gordon John Cox slows on the racetrack. When you talk about nice guys, you talk about Tom Sneva, and there are many people in the stands who had hoped that he would pull off a victory someday, and he's very close. The Texaco star, Tom Sneva, screams for the line, the double triggered flag, and Tom Sneva has won the Indianapolis 500, his first victory ever at Indianapolis. The man that perhaps has the greatest possibilities here is Tom Sneva. You'll remember him as the Indianapolis 500 champion. Now, he is part of that triple crown. If he can win this race, then go on to Pocono and win that 500 miler, then he might win one million dollars. And John Cox oh, loses John control. John Cox spinning up into the wall. He takes Kogan with him. Just suddenly, in between the third and fourth turn, John Cox spun while he was chasing Bobby. Tom Sneva comes in, and Sneva apparently got involved. Look at that right front wheel. I'm just slowing down, trying to get out all the all the crud out there. And we got drivers that look two inches in front of the race car and don't see the yellow until it's too late. Drive right in the middle of an accident, and uh, you know we got guys out there that should be writing articles instead of racing cars. And I don't know, I just can't understand how we let people do that. As they come to the white flag with two miles to go, Simon immediately pulled out of the way. Now Rick Mears closes down, comes below Chris Snipel. Mears powers past Snipel. John Paul Jr. comes in, closes behind Mears. Mears has to drop behind Snipel. They're at Snipel's draft now. Now John Paul Jr. pursues Mears. John Paul drops inside Mears, forges his way past. He's down on the apron. He gets past Rick Mears. John Paul leaks it, and Mears is spinning. Rick Mears up into the wall. Snipel torpedoes right into Mears. A serious accident. John Paul now screaming for the treasured flag. It's unbelievable. Rick Mears is going to climb out of that battered and broken race car. The crowd cheers. His engine roars. The checkered flag flies. And the school bandit, Hail Bobby, number 33, the Boy Side Brothers car, has won the Pocono 500. There are twin checkered flags waiting for Rick Mears of Bakersfield, California. He raises his hand in the air as he screams over the line. Rick Mears has won his second Indianapolis 500-mile race. It's a bright, beautiful, sunshiny afternoon in the state of Michigan. And the fans are pouring into the grandstands here. They will be filled to capacity for what should be an exciting Michigan 500. Problem on the course over at turn four. A car smacks the wall and smacks it hard. Well, oh, oh, it was a little Al gets into the side. And Al, an incredible accident. Both cars flipping. Another serious accident at the Michigan 500. Two cars together, Al Enter Jr. and Chip Ganassi. We really are. We broke this truck on the pod. And car spinning. We've got a problem, right Gary. Excuse me. We've, We've got, got a, a real problem, attacking. Gary. As we have one car spinning, Gary Bettenhausen, and it looks like that was Howdy that got right into it. Here is Andretti. This is where the race was decided last year. What will happen here in 84? Andretti down through turn three. Through turn three, through turn four. Sneva's is trying him on the inside. An accident on the backstretch. An accident on the backstretch. As they come to the line, they'll see the yellow flag and the checkered flag. And Mario Andretti appears to win the race, but boy, it was close. It was close with an accident on the backstretch at the same time. Rick Mears sets him up. Mears comes lower. Sullivan being pushed to a higher line. Now Mears starts the charge. Lord traffic checks Phillips just in front of him. Mears gets bottled up behind Phillips. And Danny Sullivan wins the Pocono 500. His second first victory of his career. And he wins the Pocono.
postponed a week due to problems regarding tires the michigan 500 indycar race was held last sunday and a first time winner emerged and then with less than 10 laps to go mario andretti is hard into the concrete a broken collarbone and hip will sideline him for at least one race allen's are made a pit stop for fresh tires and fuel emerson fittipaldi elected not to only one final lap under green Emo's win is helped by Tom Steva, who thinks he's racing for position, but is actually a lap down. Tom blocks Unzer's pursuit of Fittipaldi, and Emo has his first IndyCar victory. We are here at Pocono for the third leg of the 1985 Triple Crown season for IndyCar. There has been some 11th hour drama this morning, late this morning here at Pocono. Larry, early today, Kevin Cogan, Michael Andretti, and their entire party were departing from Andretti's summer cottage in the Poconos via a helicopter. As the helicopter took off, it hit some high-tension wires and went back down and had a crash. All of the people that were inside the helicopter, however, are all right. For Michael Andretti, however, there's been recurring back spasms, and there was some question as to whether he would start today's Domino's Pizza 500. He has been cleared by the cart official doctor, Dr. Steve Olvey. He stands by the car getting ready to strap himself in there is no consideration for a relief driver Rick Mears comes out of turn number three looks up it looks like he's gonna win a 500 mile race from the checker flag it is for Rick Mears Al Hunter Jr. will next second position with just 14 laps to go. Bobby Rahal takes over the lead, but now Kevin Cogan challenges Jerry. Kevin Cogan picks the low rope down inside the yellow line. It is still Rahal, Cogan, now it's Mears, and it's Cogan out in front now. Bobby Rahal charges down the inside, and Rahal comes past Kevin Cogan. The final roar of the racing engine. Bobby Rahal accelerates, and Bobby Rahal has won his first Indianapolis 500. This is qualifying for the Michigan 500. The driver is Rick Mears in his Cosworth-powered mark. The target, the IndyCar record, and Mark Donahue's closed course record. The first lap was incredibly fast, better than 222 miles an hour. But not fast enough for Rick Mears. He locked his knee and set his sights on a lap even faster and came across the line at 223.401 miles an hour for the fastest IndyCar lap ever and the fastest closed course lap in history. And here comes Johnny Rutherford, the checkered flag is out, and Johnny Rutherford has won the Michigan 500. And Michael Andretti leads him down and they get the green flag, the Domino's Pizza 500 is underway one of the problems with the open wheel car, but you see him go through turn two here, little turn of the steering wheel, and the head still bobs around. And ready can coast to victory from here. He's off of corner number three, sets the car straight away down the long front stretch, and the checkered flag waves. Mario Andretti has won the Domino's Pizza 500 at Pocono. Mario Andretti, congratulations. You told us earlier in the weekend how important this race was to you. It was the only real big one you hadn't won. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it certainly does complete a good cycle and I tell you, I can't tell you how happy I am because uh, it's been so important and this race has eluded me for so many years. And history is matched as the twin checkered flags come out for our second four-time winner of the Indianapolis 500, Al Unser. The Penske team scores another victory. And here it comes, the crowd cheering, Michael Andretti yes. wins the Michigan 500, a big day for him, second place and a fine effort for Al Unser Sr. When you couple the 500 win at Indianapolis, this second place finish is beautiful. And there is the checkered flag alongside the yellow, Rick Mears has won his third Indianapolis 500. 
cars side by side. Ammo on the inside. Out coming traffic. Go tight. They touch wheels. Oh. Oh, Junior into the wall hard. Emerson Fittipaldi keeps on going. They touch wheels. Al Junior into the wall and Emerson Fittipaldi will lead them back to the yellow flag. Hey, it's the third jewel of the Triple Crown. The Pocono 500. There it is. And there it is, a checkered flag. Afternoon. The balaclava comes off, the earplugs are out, Danny Sullivan is here in exaltation. Tagliani's going to figure into this finish as he runs up there with everybody else. Laugh, laugh, oh! Laugh. They touched! Oh, that one was close. So Tagliani comes up there. Whoa, 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 Man, Jardine almost slid up into Franchitti now. But it's it, the two teammates helping each other. And it may be Carpentier looking for his first ever win. Carpentier at the line. Patrick Carpentier takes his first victory. Wow, that was awesome. Here comes Marco. Oh, oh, look out! Airborne! Frank Kitty's upside down! Guys, start breathing easy. Your guy's okay. It's by him so good as Rafael Matos. They head to three. Well, Frisco got in the throttle plenty early in turn number three, but boy, it didn't serve him very well. They're Ed Carpenter is ahead of Franchini. Ed Carpenter will come off of corner number four, and he is going to win the MAV TV IndyCar World Championships presented by Lucas Oil, while Ryan Hunter Ray is the champion for 2012. For years, it was one of IndyCar's crown jewel events. Heading for the checkered flag, Al Unser, Bobby Rahal, Rick Mears, and A.J. Foyt. And now they're back. You don't want to miss history as IndyCar Triple Crown returns to Pocono. But uh, I know that all the drivers, I guarantee you, the drivers will love this place. Uh, uh, the challenges that it uh, imposes uh, are just uh, second to none as far as the super speedway. If you're going to bring history back, the one thing that the fans wanted to see was the Triple Crown. Ever since I started three years ago, uh, that was one of the big things that um, they, they, they kept telling us. And so we're very proud to say that Indy 500, Pocono, and Fontana will all be part of, of the Triple Crown. If you win the Triple Crown, if, if you win all three races, you win a million dollars. And if you win two out of three, you win 250000 We watched the alignment, looks pretty good through the first four rows. Now row five and six off of turn number four. This is a good looking alignment and it looks like the green flag will wave. It's Ed Carpenter, he'll jump to the front early. The rookie Munoz will look to the inside and Marco Andretti, he'll look to the outside, but Ed Carpenter is the leader in turn number one. Well, he's getting squeezed to the bottom of the racetrack by Carpenter. Now Ed dances up high, leaves room for T. And here comes Marco Andretti wanting to lead again. 197 laps completed at the line, three wide, Munoz on the outside, Kanan on the inside, who will make the pass miss, Stick. it's going to be Kanan. The 12th time is the charm at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the twin checkers way, TK has won the 2013 500. Today, IndyCar returns after a 24 year hiatus. Uh, this is incredible. I mean, to, to be back at Pocono after so many years and to run the speeds that they're running here, I, how, how could I miss that? Standing with one of the favorites of today's race, Tony Kanaan, and he is the only driver that has a shot at the Fuzzies Triple Crown. Of course, that's Indianapolis, Pocono, and California.
any extra in your mind knowing that you've got a shot at a $250,000 bonus for the win today? My mechanics remind me that this morning. They get <laughs> a big chunk of the prize money. So, of course, uh, we want to do it. I've seen the trophy for the Triple Crown, and obviously I'm the only one that can do that. So we're going to go for it. You heard it. We're green. Whoa, spin up into the turn one. James Hinchcliffe, starting on the front row, loses it going into turn number one. Getting so close, Soto, I'm not going to give up. I know you're there. Dixon has turned a 218 lap during the race. Let's go on board and show you the telemetry. Look at this, 223. You're watching a replay of exactly what happened and allowed Tony Kanaan to get past Dixon. Yeah, when what happened is Tony Kanaan got some problems. He ran into back of Scott Dixon and broke his nose wing. So that nose wing on that 11 Sunoco car on the right front is damaged. Well, they're coming down to the wire, and here it is. Checkered flag is out for the 30th time in his career. Scott Dixon gets the win. Kimball second. Frank Keeney completes the sweep, and the celebration begins. Ganassi versus Penske, Dixon versus Castro Neves. And they're jostling, they're sorting themselves out already. And it looked like Ed Carpenter got away to a very nice start. Up front though, the Penske's have been strong all weekend. Safety car is in, whoa, great, James great, great, Hinchcliffe. Great. Yeah, Power didn't there. get a very good start there. Just pounced, and Armendinger's going with Hinchcliffe as well. Armendinger, look at the run that third car has got. Look the at Zinger is flying. Tagliani, five wide on the high side, trying to get through to help out Dixon up front. Will Power is still struggling. This is wild. All right, you're good now. Let's make it back. Look at this at the front. Elio Castro Neves goes to the lead. Marco Andretti's in the picture down on the white line. And now it's the Front's time the for board, Scott board. Dixon, and there's a crash. AJ Armandinger. Three wide and Will Power. He wants to finish five. with three wins in the last five races of the season. Three wide on the bottom. Oh, Kimball's wow. getting squeezed. Charlie Kimball in the middle. The championship is going away for Elio Castro Neves when he looks so strong to have this. He can post home and win the championship. Right. Third win of the year for Pretty Penske's wrong, Will Power. Wrong, it's the yeah. team's first win at the track that the captain built, but we're waiting for our champion, 33-year-old New Zealander, Scott Dixon, for Target Chip Ganassi Racing is your champion. Dixon does it for the third time in his career. It's the most satisfying win of my life. Like, that is the most satisfying thing I've ever done. And I wanted to do it so badly all year. And I knew in the early ovals, I just was kind of conservative because I just want to finish every lap. And this time I'm, I'm going for it. Pocono Raceway informs the middle of the Triple Crown of 500 milers, Indianapolis, Pocono, and California. And it is Will Power that's going to bring him back to the green flag. We are green right now. Will Power tries to accelerate. Munoz tries to make a move. A loser wow. all the way down on the inside, far left side. We're Marco five wide. It's ready. Look at Marco Andretti. the wall. Montoya is working on Will Power as they come down the front stretch again. A little bit of block. Oh, something came off the car. Left, left front, front end fence for Montoya is gone. The fans are on their feet. Here he comes. Juan Montoya, the pole sitter, goes to the checkered flag, and he wins the Pocono 500. Officially the fastest 500-mile race ever in the Verizon IndyCar Series at over 202 miles an hour. It is the championship finale. It's the Mad TV 500 under the lights in Southern California. Let's go for the final time. Boy, it's been a clean, fast night. Just one portion for a spinning Whoa. Ryan Hunter Ray. This is close between AJ Foyt's man, Takuma Sato, and Graham Rahal.
Tony Kanaan knows what it's like to win a championship. Tony Kanaan wins the Mass TV 500. Three times he has been denied an IndyCar championship. Well, not anymore. Will Power is an IndyCar champion. He does it for Team Penske, and finally the agony's over. checkered flag and the winner of the Indianapolis 500 is Juan Pablo Montoya. On a warm day in Southern California, we look forward to the Mav TV 500 at Auto Club Speedway Fontana. At round 11 of the Verizon IndyCar Series, Simon Paginot, for the first time in his career, leads the field to green on an oval. Good. And look at these fresh tires. Every time they go to fresh tires, it just gets more and more aggressive as we wind these laps and keep going. Look at this. Oh, great ball. Well, it just gets grip on the right front. It allows the car to stay stuck to the bottom of the track. Like, to take the high side again. Ryan under Ray in a very rare situation in 2015. Come on, Ryan, Running the to the front. All right, John, here he comes. Goes going to make P2 any time now. Oh, Sage Karam High. Marco Dixon, Kanan. Frisco gets weak. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, Frisco's been working that for 10 laps. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Five wide. Five, five, five. Wow, wow, wow. This is it. One lap. Oh, there goes Ryan Hunter Ray and Ryan Briscoe. And Briscoe flies. Briscoe flips and flies. Caution and checkers at the same time for Graham Rahal. The drivers that are close to 40 or 40 said it was insanity. The kids said it was fabulous racing. Winner Graham Rahal said it wasn't really pack racing. It was kind of pack racing, but we had five we had five different lanes, so that's why it was so wild and so crazy. And it was disgraceful today to see 3,000 people to watch one of the greatest IndyCar races of all time. I've been on Mark Miles's butt not nearly enough. I'm gonna get I'm gonna start getting meaner here because he doesn't listen to anybody that knows anything about racing. But what he really better listen to is Dave Allen, the president of Auto Club Speedway, who likes IndyCar racing, who promoted the hell of this race, who had the worst date in the history of racing, 1.30 on a Saturday afternoon in late June. He got lucky it wasn't 100 degrees, it was only 90. But it was a horrible crowd, and he said after the race, I said, will you have these guys back? He said, I'll have these guys back if the race is in September and it's the season finale. That's the only way I'll have them back. Good for him, stick to your guns. I mean, IndyCar's heritage is in the Northeast. They've raced at Trenton, Nazareth, Pocono, Watkins Glen, Loudoun. These are the places where IndyCar's known green, to be green, from. Green, green, green. Green, green, is the call. Let's go back racing. And Simon Pagano, the Indy 500 champion, leads this race and leads it well. But look who's doing the chasing. His teammate, Will Power. One of the greatest challenges in automobile racing is the Triple Crown.